Absolutely. Made in Bristol. This is BCFM 93.2. Well, as I said at the top of the hour, it's big in Australia, but not here. ABC Television's 60 Minutes show last Sunday had an hour-long expose of the British Whitehall and Westminster VI paedophile cover-up. It wasn't reported at all here in the UK, let alone shown on our televisions. So I wonder what they were saying down under. Martin, this uh, documentary is called Lords and Predators, and yet it's no mention of it really in the British press at all. Well, isn't it interesting that in the real world that we live in, uh, it's been broadcast in Australia, and we're going to hear a clip of it now. You heard it here first. Uh, uh, The censorship won't work, will it? Uh, So let's start off, and I really do have to give a warning about this documentary, as I'm sure they did on the TV over in Australia. Uh, For youngsters, it's really not suitable, um, and anyone of a nervous disposition. Uh, But anyway, here is uh, an extract from uh, a a kid called uh, Esther. Well, she's not anymore. She's a grown-up adult. but uh, And and it's bizarre, isn't it, that we have to do this kind of thing, where there's an interview that's been done in Britain, and yet it's broadcast on the opposite side of the world. Well, yes, but as I say, the, the, we, the, there are ways around the Maginot line. OK, uh, so let's listen now uh, to Esther Baker uh, talking about what was happening to her when she was aged six. When this video was taken of 11-year-old Esther Baker, she had already been sexually abused for years. At the age of six, a family member took you to other pedophiles, didn't they? Yes. There would be a group of girls and a group of men and the men would would basically single out the girls, pick who they wanted and then we'd we'd be abused. Raped? Yeah. Um, They did um, anything from from molestation, which is is touching and, um, and oral sex. To, to full penetrative sex. Esther, now 32, has identified two British politicians who were among her abusers in the early 1990s. The man I'm going to show you the photograph of is a lord, a very senior politician. Have a look at this photograph and tell me if you recognise this person. Yeah. Yeah. So you're absolutely clear that this is the man that sexually abused you? Yeah. Over how many years? Over, um, over about five, six years. Um, him? Yeah. So the photograph I'm showing you now is a a person who until very recently, in fact the last election, was a fairly senior member of a political party in the House of Commons. Yeah. You're saying that that man abused you? Yeah. How can you be so sure? A lot of people might be watching this and thinking, well, she was a little girl. Maybe she's confused. Maybe she genuinely believes what she's saying, but she's confused. What what do you say to that? I'd say you don't forget those faces. No way. Uh, Martin, yes, it's uh, pretty disturbing, isn't it, that we don't get to see this sort of stuff over here. The other thing, of course, is that really, surely this is a job for the police to be uh, sorting out, not for these people to be having to bear their souls on national television in Australia. Well, I mean, there's obviously a lot more to this story than, uh, than, than it's going to run and run. What I've always said about this is that the evidence from the King Cora Boys Home and uh, other similar uh, institutions is that the real problem is, is that the intelligence services have used paedophilia as a means of blackmail. And that's why you've got all these top PIP people being implicated. What, what probably happens, I'm just guessing, speculating, is that they, they have a policy of trying to compromise as many people as possible, put senior politicians, etc., so that they can be blackmailed further down the line. 
and I, I, the, what the pattern that seems to be appearing in my mind is that they're actually quite rather indiscriminate about the kind of people, you know, they're not just targeting individuals, there's a general culture of paedophilia uh, being, being driven by, uh, by networks within the establishment in order to, uh, to, to create a, 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 the potential for blackmail and that's why this has become so widespread, it's not just bad people doing bad things and getting away with it there's actually a, math, a method in this madness and the King Cora Boys Home in Northern Ireland if we can come back to Northern Ireland again where, where the British Army killed hundreds of people running the Loyalist Terror Campaign as we mentioned not a minute ago uh, the King Cora Boys Home was used as a means of blackmail so um, se- people were having sex people t- taken there to have sex with underage boys and it was being filmed so that they could be blackmailed by MI5 Interesting that uh, the security services uh, the intelligence services came up in the documentary too The pedophile who called himself Peter Henderson was in fact Sir Peter Telford Heyman, Deputy Head of the British Secret Service, MI6, one of the most powerful men in Britain. Heyman was caught with diaries full of sadistic sexual fantasies about children. But the spy chief was allowed to walk free. Well, that makes my point. I mean, I, I, I think that the culture of paedophilia in the MI5 f- and MI6 in particular is probably related to the era of uh, homosexuality being illegal. So you've got lots of people in, in the organisation, ex-public school types, who actually are homosexual, but it's illegal. But of course, when, once you're a secret spy, you, you, you know, the, the blind eye is turned. And it's then a simple step from that to think, well, I've had sex with, 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 with boys, and of course boys start, but, but we used to be 21, now they're 16, then they're 13, then they're 12 and so on and of course once you start using these techniques uh, Dutroux in, in the Dutroux affair in Belgium was also linked to NATO intelligence services uh, and the NATO intelligence services are orchestrators of terrorism including Islamist terrorism and they use paedophilia as a means of blackmail um, and uh, I think the evidence is starting to pile up in both directions It's not just uh, paedophilia though also murder was involved In the 36 years since your brother disappeared, has there ever been any leads, any information? No. Has his body ever been found? No. The police investigation into Martin's disappearance was at best inept. One conversation with the officer in charge has stuck with Kevin. I I just said to him that I think he's been taken by someone high up in, I don't know, establishment, whether it's a businessman or an official of some sort. And what did that senior policeman say to you? He said to me, you keep saying things like that, you could get hurt. That and sounds my, like a threat. Well, I was like, almost fell off my chair at 17, but my mum and my dad and me, that was it. It was over with the police. No, police have reopened the case also acknowledging they have credible evidence of murders committed by the Westminster pedophile ring. Well, I mean, if, they, if, if uh, intelligence services are prepared to uh, foment terrorism and carry out paedophile acts, they're also prepared to kill people who uh, potentially can grasp them up. And, of course, they're mentioning the police there, and the answer to this is for the independent police force to actually start investigating properly, as they have done in Italy, for example, exposing NATO's vo- involvement in terrorism over decades. And the time has come for the civil police to, to assert its independence of the government and to investigate all this thoroughly. Well, I said at the top of the hour, it's not being covered, that documentary over in Britain, but that's not entirely true. If you've got a copy of the Daily Mirror uh, beginning of the week, uh, it does refer to this um, very serious um, murder case that's now been reopened of 15-year-old Martin Allen. He vanished in London in 1979 and was last seen boarding a, tu- boarding a tube train at King's Cross Station. Uh, also, I mean, some of these this evidence has been collected, Martin, but no prosecutions. Um, and also, as, it, as we were hearing on the documentary there, just immediate family members interviewed nobody else, apparently. Well, the, the implication is that police officers have been suborned by these intelligence service groups and these, and these elite groups. That's quite possibly the case. But if police officers have been suborned by those groups, my message to them is simple. We want you all behind bars, be you ever so mighty. Uh, also, there was an interview with uh, the Totnes Conservative MP, Zach Goldsmith, uh, on the documentary, and he had this to say. 
When I first was approached by people five, six years ago, and my initial instinct was to dismiss this stuff as madness, as conspiracy wackos, I know that many of the things that I would have been inclined to dismiss five, six years ago have since turned out to be true. What sort of things were people saying to you when they rang your electorate office and told you that they'd been abused? These were people who themselves had allegedly experienced very serious abuse, including rape. Um, these were children in the, well, they were children who were associated with a care home in my constituency, which was effectively mined by this paedophile ring, people taken to a guest house nearby, also in my constituency. Key evidence not being picked up, key trails not being followed, key questions not being answered, bungled police operations and investigations stopping suspiciously. I think there has to be an element of cover-up or conspiracy, call it what you want. Well, I think this is, you know, Zach Goldsmith is uh, finally being forced to confront the truth about this, isn't he? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, he's saying that uh, there is a... Uh, when people first came to him, he was saying, well, this just... It sounded like some kind of crazy conspiracy theory. He's now coming round to the view that it's true. So how does this whole business of uh, uh, people being sort of not actually interested in it because they think it's that the people are coming to them with false evidence? Well, I think it's not helped by the prurient nature of what we're talking about. There's an awful lot of chatter about paedophilia off the internet, with people get, go, getting into various, you know, get, getting themselves worked up about it. And of course, in in, in, in society in general, there's a, there's a sort of moral uh, panic about it. So there's a tendency to dismiss uh, such allegations as because you know people people are you know they love prurient stories. But the facts are starting to pile up, aren't they? And I suggest that the real thing that put thread that holds all of this together uh, is the uh, the fact that it's used but for blackmail and that various groups in the establishment have encouraged paedophilia of various kinds uh, so that, that, that people can be blackmailed to do things that, that, that they need them to do in relation to what... So, I mean, are these, are are these police interviews going to be dredged up? These cases reopened? Are people going to be arrested and sent to jail? Well, I, th this is the question. I mean, they're, they're some of the most powerful people in the land, we're told. The well, VIPs. Well, they are. And, uh, I, I, you know, we've heard the head of MI6 there is a suspected paedophile. Head of MI6 is quite possibly involved in Islamist terrorism. Is he going to be prosecuted? There's a question. Uh, but of course, in, in, in Northern Ireland, the provisional uh, IRA Republican movement agreed to give up uh, armed struggle on the understanding that there was going to be an independent police force, the police service of Northern Ireland, which would not be beholden to the establishment. Now, has that worked? To some extent, yes. To some extent, no. But that's the way forward. Uh, in, in Italy, it was the police forces that finally exposed the fact that NATO intelligence services were involved in the terrorism in that country. And in Turkey, the police seem to be taking quite an independent line, independent of their own government. These are signs of hope. You can listen again to any shows at bcfmradio.com and leave comments about your favourite programmes. BCFM 93.2, your interactive station, 24 hours a day.